Good morning everybody and welcome to Art Earth on this very chilly morning here at Juma Game Reserve. There's a lot of cloud, it has been raining a little bit overnight, so I do wonder what we're going to find this morning. I really hope we're going to find something good. We're here on quarantine where we left some action last night. Unfortunately, uh, we weren't able to follow up on a leopard that we saw just as we came onto the quarantine area. And there was a lot of impala here, so we do want to put spotlights on him and destroy his chances of hunting. So instead we did a lap just after we closed down just to see if he had moved away from the area, which he hadn't. So I'm going to try and have a look around, see if there's any tracks. I did see one or two tracks a bit up ahead, but uh, it wasn't too clear. It looked like it could have been the leopard, but it wasn't too clear. So I want to try and see if we can find any more tracks. And they were heading onto the quarantine area. So we'll have a look around, see if there's any more tracks to follow up. Otherwise, we'd like to head north and uh, maybe come down the other side of Ruby Road, Gary Dam area, and we'll go from there, hopefully. But what I would like to do is, if you would like to stretch your legs just before we jump aboard, and I'll quickly introduce who's on camera and everything. Daniel's on camera, and uh, Craig is back in final control. My name's Tara. But if you would like to stretch your legs just before we do jump, or do jump on the gunder to go out, I'd like to show you some tracks here, um, because they're quite fresh. So let's have a quick look at them before we go. I'll say they're fresh, they're not as in they should be around here in the next few minutes, but they're fresh as in sometime last night. So the tracks are actually just here. So I'm hoping the light's going to be okay. Now the best light for tracks is actually when the sun is up. You might have to just stand uh, where you are and have a look at those tracks because you may be able to see them. There's a bit of light. You may be able to see them there. And as I say, the best lighting is to have the sun behind them so that it casts shadows. This is not the, be the best lighting. But just to show you, because an elephant did walk here at some stage last night, possibly just before the last rains, because there's not too much damage to them. But you can see the raindrops all over the road, and you can also see the raindrops actually in the track. So that does tell me that it was just before the rains. And uh, I think the last rain was probably about half past four, five o'clock this morning, something like that. And it did sort of die out, so it wasn't too heavy. But uh, between that rain, rain there, yeah, you can see the tread there. Yeah, you can see the tread there. You can see all the the cracks in the foot, and that's the detail that we look for. But it was definitely between that last rain and maybe the the previous one. But I don't know when that one actually fell. So, but just judging by, it, it has actually lost some of the detail, not too much, but it has lost some of the detail. You can see the tracks already become quite rounded. You can't really see, this is the toe where the, just as you, you walk, the last thing that comes into contact is your toe. So if you imagine this is your foot and you, you push off and that's exactly what's happening here. The elephant's actually pushing off with its toe. So that's why you get this deep indent here. So this is the back foot. And the front foot is actually this larger foot here. So just like a hyena, as you can imagine, with the very heavy front and the very small back, they have a very big front paw and they have a very small back paw. And that's exactly the same with the elephant. They've got a very, very large front foot and a much smaller back foot. And especially you can see it's nicely on that one. So I just wanted to show you quickly. Maybe not everybody's seen an elephant track, and this was quite a nice one, especially this, this time of the morning. So let's jump aboard and see what else we can go and find this morning.
Okay. And we see one of the Mad Impala up ahead. As it is starting to drizzle, but we'll see how we go. <coughs> Extremely light at the moment. I think the rest of the herd are over there. the herd of the impala bear. Morning, lady. Where's the rest of the herd? Oh, we've got an impala chasing a female as well. That's the noise that you just heard. We may see them. We're just behind the bush for us at the moment. We may just see them running towards the, the wildebeest. There we go. No, I don't want to go that way. You can't force me. That's exactly what they're going to do. Trying to keep all the females all together in the middle of his territory. You can see the wildebeest doesn't pay them any attention anymore. They're so used to that call. These youngsters will be about four or five months old now, probably close to six some of them. Impala again.
So I would like to know why we only have five gnu down here, and I'd like to know where the rest of the herd is. I wonder if they did get split last night. <coughs> Bless you. So we're going to go up the other side of quarantine. Let's see what we can find track wise. Bless you. And anybody like in wanting to ask any questions this morning, all you need to do is put them in an email and send them through to questions at wildearthsafari.tv. So that's questions at wildearthsafari.tv. And if you have any new viewers, we do broadcast live in Juma Game Reserve, so your question will be answered. as we drive around. Sometimes it's not always possible. And to kind of increase your chances of having your question answered, if you ask a question about an animal that's on your screen at the moment, otherwise the general questions we usually answer as we're driving around looking for other animals. And this is the bachelor group of Impala. playing and sparring with each other. I think those two you just were on, those two. Looks like they might try something. Maybe not. They're sizing each other up with the horn form. There you go, these two here. There we go. You see them licking the lips, holding their head high, and then head down is a challenge. It's quite interesting these males are getting so close to the, the breeding herd. I think the male who's calling is so, he's actually following this one female. Actually, if we're able just to have a quick look at him, because he's, he's following her quite intently. That could be what's drawing his attention to stop chasing these males that are sneaking in behind us now. And just behind the, the GNU there, where we were. There he goes, he's following that female again, look. I think he has spotted one or two males behind us.
Well, most matings will happen during the cover of darkness, so it'd be quite interesting. I thought he was going to try and mate her, but maybe she's just she's very close, but not quite ready yet. And now we've got the two actually rutting there. becoming ever more intense. You can see the intensity that was happening there rather than just sparring and practicing. They've just heard the rest of their herd. Oh, there they come. Just behind the termite mound. And I think that was actually a mother with her calf. So something did happen here last night. The wildebeest have been split off, so I think they're going to go and join the rest of the herd now. So let's continue around the corner Let's see if there's anything that's been happening yeah baby is trying to drink from its mother Oh no, she, she's not actually allowing it to feed, so I'm just wondering whether it is actually her calf or whether this calf still hasn't found its mother yet. And she's trying its look, because females are very particular about who drinks. They won't allow just any calf to drink from her. She's not actually standing still to allow the youngster to actually drink.
Very interesting. I'm just checking for any of the trees, just to see if there's the carcass of a wildebeest, and we'll just check on the open area as well. It looks like they are heading up that way now. It must be where the rest of the herd are. Hello, boys. Cycle at the front of little Evelyn. Uh, we got <laughs> two boys at the back Huey and little Gordy. Still no new arrival yet. You can see them trying to get a, an advantage point. And they're looking very wary. That was a big male tank man, he's the leader of the troop, although it is a very small troop, generally you will have a few other big males. Depending on the size of the troop, sometimes they can reach 100, in some, some cases can even reach 200 in a troop. Depending on the species. Yeah. Well, let's keep going around. There's a of the baboons now. Looks like they're going to. Oh, a couple of them have crossed over towards Inga's house. Looks like they're going to try and wreak havoc again. <laughs> nice to break in yesterday. Looks like that's where they're going. Got another wildebeest here on our right. Look 
looks like it's the bull it's heading over towards the other wildebeest. They are looking that way. I think we need to. Here it comes. Are you coming up this way, mister? You're going to rejoin the herd. Yes, you see them. I'm hearing Franklin's complain. I think we need to get that side. There we go. He's going to go and join them. Trying just to go over this area with a fine tooth comb as much as possible, just in case, because the animals are acting a little bit odd. And I say with the split of the wildebeest, something definitely happened here last night. But it's difficult to say if something was successful. It's certainly worth just checking everything out. Good morning, Caleb. <laughs> Hope you're well this morning. Welcome on board. Wondering if wildebeest will ever attack humans. If it was being bothered. And if you see wildebeest when you're walking, they do tend to run away rather than try and approach you. Generally, they don't pose a threat to humans, but it's like any animal. If you corner it, it's got nowhere else to go. And through you, then they will stand the ground and they will force their way through you. And if that means harming you, then it is a possibility. And they, they can stand looking down on you, especially if there's the big male there. It would certainly look down on me because I'm quite short. They can be as tall as a person with their head held high. And those horns are definitely something to write home about. Hey, guinea fowl. race is going on here. Mm -hmm. Let's have a quick look at them before we carry on. <clears throat> the young guinea fowl, not yet got the blue skin and the crest on top of the head. <laughs> or the helmet, that's where they get the name from, helmeted guinea fowl. <clears throat> okay, we need to get going because those Franklin are calling. <clears throat> Let's see what's upsetting them. I don't really pay much attention. I just want to see if we can be on the other side of the wildebeest from where they were looking.
Bless you. Good morning to you Chris, welcome on board this morning. Wanting to know how far can baboons travel in a day? And it is so varied, it really just depends on how much food they can find. And depends on the season, so in the winter you'll find the troop will cover a lot more ground because they need to find food and it's going to be a lot more scarce than in the summer, whereas in the summer We've actually seen the baboons not even leave this area. So we have seen our local troop, the Gary Gang, who we've just seen literally stay here on the, the open area and just go down to the dam to drink. And it looks like these guinea fowl are intent on running in front of us at an escort. <laughs> oh, we have some new power running down down the way there, here's the border bits. Troops can cover. Oh, they can ha have a home range of anywhere between 400 hectares and 4,000 hectares. And I'm pretty sure this troop here have at least 1,000 hectares because they do tend to. Oh, you see, I've got tracks here again. Going this way this time, so we'll try that side. Ah, male in parlor behind the females, so it's making them run. But our baboons do tend to cover quite a lot of area. And they head south. And we don't really know how much area they cover down in the south. We just know that they do head south. to hear from you as well this morning. Welcome on board. <coughs> Excuse me. I uh, wanting to know if a wildebeest calf is killed with another female. Oh, 
hold on, let me get this right. <laughs> My brain's gone frozen. If a mother is killed, will another mother with milk allow the other calf to suckle, the calf of the dead mother? And has a female been known to steal a calf? I'm sure it might happen if a female has recently lost her calf. Maybe it's happened, but I don't, I've not really heard of it. And as I say, the wildebeest are very particular about calves and, and suckling their own calf. But again, I think it really will depend on the individual. Because it's difficult for us to really say yes or no. It could be there'll be an individual where the maternal instinct is so strong if she has lost her calf, maybe she might just accept a fairly young calf if it ever happened. But generally, it doesn't seem to happen. But maybe there would be the odd one or two cases where it might. I don't think. Welcome on board. Wanting to know what the fence was that we drove past. Well, we do have two houses here. We live in one, where the baboons were actually walking to. And the owner of Juma Game Reserve also. And that's just the fence around the house, just to protect the house from elephants. and lions and other animals like that. Well, I'm not seeing anything here. I'm not even seeing any more of the wildebeest here. So, I think we'll try going down Zoe's road and seeing if there's any signs there. a few little drizzles again. Just hope that it stays away. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Let's see what else is out there. I'm actually quite surprised there's been a lot of activity on the quarantine area. And it's been very interesting to see all the interactions. Oh yes, we're going to go going down Vubu. I think let's still try that. Doesn't sound like anyone's actually headed up that way today. We'll try Zoe's Road in a little bit. But it can also be a predator was unsuccessful last night and it just split the herd. So maybe that is what's, ha what's happened because I'm not seeing any other signs of them being successful. Oh, it looks like someone has. Gone Just 
drive along here a little bit just to see if there's any tracks here. We're now on Voyatella Access, which is actually quite a, a well-travelled road by a lot of the cats. by the looks of it. Okay, well if he's not seeing anybody. Line track. Going off that way. Cutting up there, so I think we do need to try Galego shortcut. Maybe a line walked through last night. Okay. Let's turn around and try Galego then. I've seen this wildebeest a couple of times along here. Okay, are you stopping? And he's pretty awake when it comes to predators, I think. And I was just having a look. Jingy lions were actually walking down the road and they pulled off to one side and actually slept just off of this road here. And he was stood actually just, just about where we are now, looking down the road, and he obviously picked up some sign to say something was wrong. Whether it was the scent of the lion or maybe a glimpse but he didn't give an alarm call but he was very very much aware that there was something wrong in the area I do have a little bit of drizzle again. It keeps threatening. I might just have to give the lens a quick wipe. Ooh, that's what turned again.
drops in the street. <clears throat> I know, I can just see You're going to be able to see the Niada bull through there. You see him. Oh, there he is. Yeah, the ball just sticking close to the thicker part of the bush where all the air is going to be slightly warmer, being trapped by the trees and the vegetation. There he disappears. <laughs> Niana Bull. And that's actually the cutoff point where you call antelope bulls or rams. So you may notice that we call the impala rams. So anything smaller than a Nyala male is known as a ram. And anything larger is known as a bull. And the females, anything smaller than the Nyala, so a ewe, anything larger is a cow. But what is actually quite interesting is also the offspring also has a different name. We have lambs for the smaller antelope species and calves for the
large antelope species. But you tend to call a Niala, if it's a male youngster, then you call it a calf. If it's a female, then it's a lamb, just to make things really interesting. Rain is getting just a little bit heavier. Yeah, I think it's just getting a little bit too heavy at the moment. I think we are going to have to put the cover on the camera for now. I'm hoping it's not going to last too long, so do bear with us and we'll see if we can head back out straight after this little storm or this little drizzle. So we'll try and keep the cover on and uh, hopefully we'll be back out in about 10 or 15 minutes, keep your fingers crossed. But I'm going to have to say goodbye for now, sorry. <laughs> Now this is one of the big cats we don't see very often. So when it's here on the Western Gary, it's always a great sight to see. We're going to have to be a bit patient because there is a lot of vegetation around, quite thick vegetation. It may just pop its head up again, but if I was trying to get any closer, it would push it away from us. Every little sound, every little movement, his head's up and having a look around, seeing what's going on. Because they are such a delicate cat compared to the lion or leopard, the whole body is structured so that they can actually run down their prey. So they can't possibly have any extra weight on them whatsoever so they they can defend themselves to a certain degree but they do have to be extremely careful and so they are very skittish when they're eating hence why any little sound any little movement is having a check around making sure there's nothing going to come and uh, giving me a surprise Now if you look very carefully, you'll be able to see the beautiful black lines down the face, the tear marks which are very characteristic of the cheetah, and the pure black spots all over its body. As opposed to the rosettes of the leopard.
Now once the vehicle actually moves out, you may be able to hear the bones crunching and chewing the meat. Just wondering, I don't think we're going to see it any better if we move back. But if we move forward, I don't think they also had a, a visual there, but we may be lucky. But I'm just going to let it relax a little bit because it's had a couple of vehicles moving around it, so I don't want it to uh, disturb it too much by moving too quickly again once the other vehicles moved. Now there are cats that are generally solitary unless a female has cubs. Males can be in a coalition just like the lions. You can have two or three males generally if they're brothers. But otherwise they're usually a solitary cat. Much darker eyes than the leopard and the lion. And it's possible those black marks down the nose may help to gauge the distance, may help them to focus on what animal they're going for, may even help to stop the glare of the sun. No one's really too sure. But those are all the theories that I've heard. some movement at the back there. Now that we've sat here for a little while, hopefully we're not going to disturb it too much by moving. I'm going to see if we can use the termite mound. Oh. That was the keys.
See all the little flies irritating. A much smaller head than the other cats. But a much larger nasal cavity to allow a lot more oxygen flow into the lungs which is then distributed through the muscles and even their teeth are much smaller than that of their cousins again to allow for a larger nasal cavity so all that space increases the air flow into the lungs and that allows more oxygen to the muscles for every intake in breath so it actually helps them for when they need that burst of energy for chasing after the prey and they can reach up to about 100, sometimes 120 kilometers an hour when they're chasing after prey so those muscles are going to be working extremely hard but they can only sustain that for a very short distance maybe a few hundred meters at the most so for a cheetah to be successful they actually do need to get very close to their prey now he keeps popping his head up so maybe he should actually stay here for the time being there we go he may even come a little bit further to, towards the open area You see that beautiful long tail acts like a rudder for when they twisting and turning after a gazelle or an antelope. Hi Glynis and uh, for anybody else who may have missed us at the beginning with the cheetah, we're just south of Impala Plains and probably about 60-70 meters from Triple M. So quite close to the main road towards the gate. It always amazes me actually how many animals can be along these main roads. And um, what it's eating, I think somebody said that it was an impala. I didn't quite hear or didn't quite see should I say, it's just from what I've heard it was an impala. Now I thought they said it was a, a young impala but I think it may have been about a year old because it looked certainly looked larger than the six month old impala that we've got at the moment. So it might be a yearling. Question. Again, when cheetahs are working together, whether it's a female with cubs or a coalition, if you get more than one cheetah actually eating from a kill, you'll find one generally eats while the other one watches and then they swap over. Because even a jackal or a couple of jackals can actually drive a cheetah from its kill. And jackals are much smaller than a cheetah. But other prey of the cheetah, you can have fully grown impala, blesbok, which are usually found on open plains. Now, we won't really find any here in the Sabi Sands. They tend to be further west on the big open plains and further north. An ostrich, also make up quite a large proportion of cheetah diets uh, they're found in, in quite
quite large numbers. They're generally wildebeest and other other antelope that size, generally a single cheetah won't really have the strength to pull any of those down, but what we have heard is the coalition of three and four males that are in the area have been bringing down adult waterbuck and antelope like that. And again, because of their small head, you don't normally find them going for the nose when they're delivering their the bite that kills. Whereas if you watch lions, you'll often find them with their mouth over the nose and mouth of the animal, but their heads and the mouth aren't big enough for that, so you generally find them going for the throat. But on occasion, I have seen pictures on occasion and going for that bite, but it's very unusual go for that nose and the mouth bite. <laughs> okay, well let's see if we can get a little bit of height from the termite mound. It might just give us a different angle. Sorry, little one. And even if we can have a look through the trees there. Amazing, even just behind some grass, they completely disappear. <laughs> just gonna see if we can just move on just a little bit more. I just want to try and move past it. We might be better off actually going a little bit further around because we are getting a little bit too close to it, and I don't want to push it away. with the tree here. I was hoping it was slightly higher ground here, but unfortunately not really doing too much for us. And I think we have the silver cluster leaf to contend with there on the termite mound. There he is. Well, actually, I'm saying it here. It looks quite heavy. So it possibly is a he, but haven't been able to see for sure.
can hear the black crown chagra calling. And just in case some of you weren't able to join us in the chat room a little bit earlier, they did find in Duna, in the drainage line just west of the quarantine area. And I'm not too sure where he was hiding. He may have been hiding down towards the pump house on Philman's Dip. But he was slowly making his way up towards the quarantine area. And I've been keeping my ear to the radio, but it sounded like they did lose him a little bit earlier back into the drainage line. So he was around. I think we were on the right lines. Kinduna being one of the young male leopards of the area. But with your cheetah being a diurnal hunter, it may just move on once it finishes. The carcass may move on to go and drink water during the day. It may decide just to relax and let the food digest in the same area. But they are more likely to move on during the day out of the area. So it's worth having a look. And with any luck, he may be back here. They may not have moved on this afternoon. I'm hoping that he's going to stay here for this afternoon's drive. Quite amazing, they can just lie very flat and even in the shortest of grasses, if they find a little depression in the ground, they'll find it very difficult to see a cheetah unless they, they twitch the ear or flick the tail. But it would be nice if he just puts its head up one more time, we'll see if he does. few sounds off in the distance. What I'm hoping is there's a little bit of an open area just behind it and I'm hoping it's going to go and s sit down there. It's beautiful amber eyes. Which station approaching the skunk on? <clears throat> okay, with another vehicle approaching, it may just put its head up again. But that's possibly what it was hearing approaching.
morning. He's just here. You should be able to see it as you go around. Good, how are you? Well, it looks like there's a few people interested in this sighting again. So unfortunately I think we're going to have to say goodbye for now, but it looks like he is becoming a lot more relaxed again, not putting his head up as much. So with my friend the tree here, <laughs> a nice bush willow. I think I'm going to be saying goodbye. And I hope you've enjoyed seeing the cheetah, a cat we don't often get a chance to see, which is really quite amazing. And hopefully, with any luck, it's going to be here for this afternoon's game drive. So please join me. Remember, the times have changed. So we're going to be heading out at 3 o'clock Central Africa time for our next live safari. And we'll see if we can catch up with Nduna. Hopefully, he'll be around quarantine area a little bit later on too. And you never know, Karula might also make an appearance. Who knows? This is the bush after all. Anything is possible. But for myself, Daniel and Craig, take care. We'll see you again here on Wild Earth. Bye for now.